Up until today, the way you'd start a new bevy game is by using cargo to scaffold a new project with a binary crate using cargo new, then using cargo add to add bevy as a dependency, and then swapping the generated main.rs with something a little bit more bevy focused. Now this will always work, but there's many other considerations you might want to address when starting a new project. For example, our cargo.toml is fairly empty. It's got no optimizations, no lint config, and nothing else we may want to set up. We've also got no profiles for web deployment, for example. To address this and other ends, the Bevy CLI working group has produced the first alpha release of a potential future Bevy CLI. The CLI is capable of scaffolding new projects, linting for Bevy specific issues, building for the web, and more. If you're going to participate in the Bevy game jam, which starts on Saturday, the Bevy alpha CLI is a great way to get your project started. So because this is an alpha release and hasn't been upstreamed yet, we'll have to install the Bevy CLI from Git. There are some instructions here in the readme, but note that the tag is not in place yet. So if we start by copying that command into our terminal, we can then go back to the readme, go to tags, and find the latest release. For us, that's gonna be CLI v0.1.0 alpha one. We're gonna copy this text exactly since it points to the git commit, and we'll replace the dash dash tag here with that tag. So we're cargo installing from the git repo, that is the bevy CLI, at the specific tag, which points to a specific commit in the git repo, with the locked flag, that's dash dash locked, which if we go to the repo, we can see that there's a cargo lock in here and that dash dash locked means to use this cargo lock. And then we're installing the Bevy CLI. Now I already have it installed, so I get a message that says, hey, it's already installed, but you'll see a bunch of output here. With the CLI installed, we'll be able to run Bevy dash dash version to confirm that the binary that we just installed is available on our path. For us, everything's good because we saw a version here. If you did the install and the Bevy CLI isn't on your path, you can check your home directory .cargo bin file, which for me on Mac OS looks something like this. On Windows, you'll have a different path here with a whole bunch of things that I have installed. Once we have the Bevy CLI installed, we can switch to using Bevy new away from cargo new. So we'll do Bevy new my dash game. And immediately you can see the difference. The big difference between the two, that's cargo new and Bevy new, is that Bevy new defaults to a set of templates in the Bevy flock organization. This means that any template in this organization that starts with bevy underscore new underscore is effectively the name of a template. The default template, the one you get with just bevy new, is bevy new minimal. But you can also do bevy new dash t 2d to then get access to the bevy new 2d template. This is actually even more powerful and you can point to arbitrary git repos, arbitrary branches, and more. In this case, I'm pointing to rest adventure slash scheme with the template minimal branch, which is a git repo branch that I maintain for the Bevy Blender integration project called Scheme. You can do this for any of your own templates, as well as any other project can host their own templates that work with the Bevy CLI. This is generally because the Bevy CLI uses Carco Generate under the hood. We're gonna continue with the minimal template and cover Bevy New 2D in a different video. So after calling Bevy New My Game, we can CD into My Game and see what we've got. The template does come with a bunch of configurations. So if you're interested in those, I encourage you to go read the template repo which has great explanations for what's in the cargo toml as well as what's in this dot cargo folder. We'll be focusing in this video on the CLI itself. So if we look at our main.rs, it's exactly what we would have written ourselves. And instead of running cargo run, we'll run bevy run. And this of course, as you would expect, builds and runs the bevy application. Now in this case, we don't have anything in our application, so we don't really render anything, but we do get a window, which means that our bevy app is fully working. Now it's nice that we can do that, but cargo can also do that. This leads us to one of the biggest advantages of using the Bevy CLI, which is the ease with which you can test and run on the web. We just used Bevy Run, and to compile for web and serve via a web server, use Bevy Run Web. So after Bevy Run Web completes, we can open our app at localhost 4000. And if I open that up and give a little bit of a refresh, we see a loading indicator as well as our app spawning in right after. Of course, again, we don't have anything in our app, so we don't really see anything, but the fact that the loading spinner went away is a good sign. Similarly, you'll want to deploy these web assets somewhere someday, hopefully, so that people can play them. And if you're participating in the Bevy Jam, probably that's going to happen on the first day. To do that, you can run Bevy Build Web with the bundle flag. And of course, if you're shipping it to end users, you'll want the release flag as well. So one of the nice things about the Bevy CLI is it comes with a number of profiles. In this case, we're using the web release profile. Bevy CLI will bundle JavaScript for us although don't necessarily expect it to like bundle a React app for you or anything like that. It will, however, run wasmopt over your wasm file if you're running in release mode, which gives you significant size savings for your end bundle. And if we take a look at this directory it gave us, 
we can see that it gave an index.html, a mygame.js, and a mygamebg.wasm. Now this isn't a wasm tutorial, so suffice it to say that these files are necessary for you to actually deploy. <laughs> You're allowed to modify the index.html as much as you want, but it is notable to point out that the index.html file comes with some niceties that you would want to do anyway and would have to know to do if it wasn't done for you here. Now, it is worth noting that there is a documentation book for the Bevy CLI and also the Bevy linter, which we're going to talk about now, which you can find by going to the Git repo for the Bevy CLI and clicking on the links. The Bevy linter is actually available standalone and as a subcommand. So if we want to run it on our game, we can write in Bevy lint and we'll immediately see some build artifacts. And this is because it's notable that Bevy lint checks your code with the nightly tool chain it was installed with. This is due to the fact that it's architected in a certain way and uses certain things. Not terribly important, but suffice it to say that this is a fairly cutting edge thing that Bevy is doing with this linter and that there is work going on to stabilize this upstream in Rust. So for us, the Bevy linter doesn't give any output. We don't really have an application or that much code in our main.rs, so that's kind of expected. But if we go to the about page here and we click on all lints, that gives us this page in the documentation. This page in the documentation categorizes a bunch of lints into a bunch of different categories, which is generally speaking the same kind of thing that Cargo Clippy does. In this case, there's some suspicious lints, which are worn by default, which would be on if we uh, violated them. But if we go down to restriction, there's one here that I actually really like that isn't enabled, and that's missing reflect. So there's a bunch of different ways you can use these lints. The way that we're gonna use it is by dropping a line of code right at the bottom of our Cargo Toml here. So package metadata bevy lint, Bevy lint will read this and we'll make missing reflect a warning. Then if we write struct, you know, my component and we derive component for it and we save and we lint our program now and we get some clippy output here because we never use name in our program. So obviously name is effectively dead code, but below that we get a Bevy specific lint to find a component without a reflect implementation. Now, if you've never worked with Bevy or haven't worked with it that much, or You've just never worked with the reflection infrastructure. You may not know why this is important, but if you want to work with your components and their field values inside of something like Bevy Inspector eGUI, for example, the World Inspector plugin that you can see right here, or you want to take advantage of something else like Bevy Scheme, which heavily uses the reflection representations of your components to build Blender UI, then these reflection implementations are super important. So it's really nice to have this lint set up which will actually remind me that, hey, you know, you forgot to derive reflect and you forgot to reflect the component data, et cetera. So that's basically it for the Bevy CLI. We covered new, build, run, and lint, but there's also completions for your terminal if you want those. And honestly, it's made my life a hell of a lot easier. If you're a fan of the channel, you may know just how many Bevy projects I make on a weekly basis. So being able to both scaffold them, run them natively, and run them on the web with one tool as well as linting for some of these things like the reflection information is just absolutely super helpful. So if you're participating in Bevy Jam 6, definitely go check out the Bevy CLI Alpha, and we'll have a couple more videos leading up to the jam, so I'll see you again when those come out. Have a great rest of your day.